ಕುಬಿಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರ ಧಾಮಿ ಗುಬಿಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರ ಧಾಮಿ ಗುಪಿ ಜನ ಬಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರ ಧಾರಿ ಯಶೋರ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ 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 ಜಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾರವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾರವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾರವ ರಾಧ ಮಾರವ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾರವ ರಾಧ ಮಾರವ ರಾಧೆ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಶಿಲ್ ಪ್ರೌಪಾರಿಕೆ ಜಾಂ ವಿಶ್ವಾದ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪ್ರಭಜಗಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೌತರ ಸತ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮಾದ ಐ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಶಿಲ್ ಪ್ರೌಪಾರಿಕೆ ಇಸ್ಕಾನ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಜಗತ್ ಗುರು ಶಿಲ್ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾರಿಕೆ ಜಾಂ ವಿಶ್ವಾದ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪ್ರಭಜಗಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೌತರ ಸತ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಗೌಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾರಿಕೆ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣಾ ಬೃಂದಕೆ ನಾಮಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಹರಿದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೋರ್ ಕೆ ಜಾಯ ರೂಪ ಸನಾಥನ್ ಬತ ರಘುನ ಶ್ರೀ ಜೀವಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಬತ ದಾಸ ರಘುನ ಸದ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಗಾನ್ ಕೆ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಸಿ ಕಹೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸದಿ ಗೋರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದಕೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ ಶ್ಯಾಮಕೂನ್ ರಾಧಕೂನ್ ಗಿರ್ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ ಕೆ ಕಂಠರಾಜ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಕೆ ಸಾಮ ವೇದ ಗೋರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದಕೆ ಗೋರ್ ಪ್ರೇಮನಂದಿ ಅ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸಂಬುದ ಭೌತಿಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸಂಬುದ ಭೌತಿಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸಂಬುದ ಭೌತಿಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ಶಿಶಿ ಗುರು ಅನ್ ಗೋರ್ ಅಂಗ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ಶಿವ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾನ್ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓ 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय getting to hear from Srimad Bhagavatam 8th canto chapter 17 the Lord agrees to become Aditi's son text 2 and 3 I'll chant 2 and then 3 is on the board I believe Chintayantye kaya budhya mahapurusham ishvaram pragyendriya dushtasvan manasa sarati we can chant together manas Chaika Greya Budya Manas Chaika Greya Budya Bhagavati Akilatmani Bhagavati Kailatmani Vasudeva Samadaya Vasudeva Samadaya Chachara Ha Payovritam Chachara Ha Payovritam Manas Chai Kagraya Buddha Bhagavatya Kilatmani Vasudeva Samadaya Chacharaha Payovritam Manaschai Kagraya Buddha Bhagavatyat Kilatmani Vasudeva Samadaya Chacharaha Payovritam Manas Chaikagraya Badya Bhagavat Yat Kilatmani Manas Chai Kagraya Budya Bhagavatya Kilatmani Vasudeva Samadaya Chachara Hapayo Vaishnavis Manas Chai Kagraya Budya Bhagavatya Kilatmani Vasudeva Samadaya Chachara Hapayovitam Manas Chai Kagraya Budya Bhagavat Yat Kilatmani Vasudeva Samadaya Chachara Hapayovitam We'll do all the word for word meanings. Chintayanti, constantly thinking. Ekaya, with one attention. Budya, and intelligence. Mahapurusham, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ishvaram, the Supreme Controller. Lord Vishnu. Pagriya, completely controlling. Indriya, the senses. Dushta, formidable, powerful. Ashvan, 
horses, manasa, by the mind, buddhisarati, with the help of intelligence, the chariot driver, mana, the mind, cha, also, eka agraya, with full attention, buddhya, with the intelligence, Bhagavati, and to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Akila Atmani, the Supreme Soul, the Super Soul of all living entities. Vasudeva, unto Lord Vasudeva. Samadaya, keeping full attention. Chachara, executed. Ha, ha, thus. Payavritam, the ritualistic ceremony known as Payavrata. Translation. With full undiverted attention, Aditi thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and in this way brought under full control her mind and senses, which resembled forceful horses. She concentrated her mind upon the Supreme Lord Vasudev. Thus she performed the ritualistic ceremony known as Payavrata. Please repeat. With full undiverted attention, Aditi thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in this way, brought under full control her mind and senses which resembled forceful horses. She concentrated her mind upon the Supreme Lord Vasudev. Thus she performed the ritualistic ceremony known as Payavrata. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. This is the process of Bhakti Yoga. Anya bilashita shunyam, jnana karma dhyanavritam, anakuyena krishnanu, shilanam bhakti uttama. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. One simply has to concentrate upon the lotus feet of Vasudev, Krishna, Savai Mana, Krishna Padara Vindyo. Then the mind and senses will be controlled, and one can engage himself fully in the devotional service of the Lord. The devotee does not need to practice the Hatha Yoga system to control the mind and senses. His mind and senses are automatically controlled because of unalloyed devotional service to the Lord. While saying our prayers together, would you please ask that uh, the Lord and the Divine Personalities bless us all, that I might speak something nicely, that you might hear attentively. In this word-for-word -word purports, three times it was described, she performed her devotional service with full attention. Very important. So if we can pray with full attention, hear and chant with full attention. I think the mercy is readily available. So please. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Shakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadandikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sri Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shiva Shakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindho Dinabando Jagatpate 
Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostite Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kapaturubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnabibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Disitarane Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Before beginning, I know some friends and family members are watching via the internet in America. It's Sunday evening there. It's Mother's Day there. Once a year, they get their due kudos. So to my friends, to my mothers, we offer our respects and blessings from the Prabhus here in Mayapur Dham. And to all of you, Matajis also. Matajis ki. Now I'm going to be discussing pure devotional service. I hope you won't think that I'm the big fool that I am. <laughs> All of you who are here know that uh, you know I'm the guy who'll wear the biggest garland and nobody else will. <laughs> what a puffed up idiot. The false ego, the mind, the senses, the intelligence even, they're all of this world. We cannot understand Krishna with such dull, blunt senses. Pure devotional service is inconceivable because it's the sarup shakti of the Lord. Pure devotional service, we often think that I can't do that, I'm not doing that. This verse that's been given in the purport by Srila Prabhupada, Anyabi Lashita Sunyam, it's a Paribhasa Sutra of the Nectar Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It is the foundation within which we understand all of the nectar of the science of Godhead given by Rupa Goswami in that Shastra. In this verse, we can find such enlivenment and such encouragement for ourselves who factually know when we're introspective and contemplative that this Shuddha Bhakti, what to speak of Prema Bhakti, is something so rare and so difficult to achieve, in fact impossible on, in my own, simply by my own endeavors. I didn't hear class yesterday. I was getting to associate with the Samkirtan devotees in a wonderful class given by my Prabhu. So we got to hear, I'm sure, the glories of surrendering to the spiritual master. Yesterday's verse dealt with it. Only by the mercy of the spiritual master can we get Krishna, the mercy of Krishna. What are, what is the mercy of the spiritual master? It's his instructions. His instructions are available to all of us. Some take them, some take a little of them, some refuse. Some take them for a while and get bewildered and leave them behind. In this verse and purport, in, in discussing some of it, I'm going to try and address the mystery of pure devotional service. Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. It's the most confidential secret. I heard that there was one question asked yesterday. How is it that Aditi, she approached the Lord with mundane desire? She saw Krishna. He appeared in front of her. Vishnu appeared right before her and became her son. How do you get the Lord when you approach him with mundane desire? 
her husband addressed her as my dear Griamadi, one who's very attached to household life. I think she took it as a compliment because she addressed him in the same way. Well, my dear Griamadi Prabhu. She thought she was her body. She's the mother of the demigods. She took it that all the jivas, living entities that were in demigod bodies were her sons. And her sons had lost their home, their wealth, their reputation, everything. And she wanted to get it back for them. All dealing with the mundane temporary aspect of this world, the material world. Everything gets taken away from everybody on the material platform. That's the way this world is designed. But somehow or other, she got Darshan, she got Vishnu as her son. How is this possible? How is it possible when we might have material desires that we can also get Krishna? We can get pure devotional service. This is a very important question to be asked. And I'd like to pray that I might be able to discuss it a little bit, expand on it a little bit. This verse, Anyabhilashita Shunyam, it's the definition, the perfect, most concise definition of pure devotional service, has three primary characteristics. The first one is that it is full engagement, Krishna, Krishna Anushulanam. Full engagement. Pure devotional service is meant to be 24-7. Uninterrupted. Srila Prabhupada says, if we have any gaps in our devotional service, no problem. Maya is expert in filling the gaps. We don't want that. We're here in Mayapur Dham to get the mercy that somehow or other, us tiny little midgets can grab the moon and get its mercy. Gora Chandra. So the first aspect is its full engagement. Now full engagement is applicable or possible both in the stage of Vaidhi Bhakti and Bhava or Prema Bhakti. It's possible. I may be in the bodily concept of life, but if I simply do what I'm told by the authority, the gurus, the Vaishnavas, Shastra, then I get the results as if I had realization of pure devotional service. Just do it. Srila Prabhupada says in one purport, as if in military fashion. You don't mess around when you're in the military. You have no rights. You are the property of the government. And you will do whatever they tell you to do. Srila Prabhupada tells us the secret to achieving Krishna's pleasure, the pleasure of the pure devotees, is if we reciprocate in the same way, submissively hear what they are sharing. They are giving us the ticket back home, back to Godhead. They are giving us our awareness, realization of who we are and our relationship with Krishna via instructions how to serve Krishna how to perform devotional service. Anu means, of Anu Shilana means following. In other words, we take the guidance of Guru and Parampara. We don't speculate if we want the same result that they have. The whole point at surrendering at the feet of Gurus and Vaishnavas is that we can become like them. We want to taste we want to possess what they have, loving devotional service to Krishna. If we please the Guru, Yasha Prasada, Bhagavat Prasada, Yasha Prasada, Nagati Katopi, we will get Krishna's mercy. If we don't, if we speculate, if we hedge our bets, well, there might be some pleasure in this material world. I'm going to listen to my mind. Those senses of mine are attracted to this, that, this, that, and also that. There's bound to be some pleasure there. Then we will simply get the unlimited misery that the material world promises, or Krishna promises, is delivered in the material world. But in this verse, she gave her full attention 
to the instructions of her guru, her husband, Kashyapa Muni. He didn't give some theory. He had followed Payavrata himself. That's what enabled him to please his guru, Lord Brahma, to do his service perfectly. It's what allowed him to realize the Lord within his heart. He had the realization, he had the goods. He could give it to anyone he wanted to and he gave it to his wife. It was simply up to her to accept the mercy. Lord Brahma himself had performed the same vrata it said, and to be empowered to create this material universe in service to Krishna. This is disciplic succession. If we make our lives the, that of an instrument of guru and the previous acharyas, then Krishna magic can take place. The impossible can happen. We can become loving eternal servants of Krishna. That's a miracle. Considering what our condition is when we first come to Krishna consciousness. Everyone comes with material desires, practically speaking. Chatur Vijante Mam, what is it? Jana Sukatan Arjuna, Arto Jigyasa Artarti, Jnanicha Bhartarshava. That's expected. Sometimes devotees who have some difficulty with pride stick their nose up. Oh, this Prabhu hasn't achieved the level of seriousness that I have. This Prabhu couldn't do the vrat that I did. Oh, they do the service so poorly. I could do that better. What do you expect? We all come to the shower of Krishna consciousness dirty. This is an institution whereby the spiritual master can relieve us of the disease of thinking we're this body and an enjoyer of this body and this world. Almost without exception everyone comes with material desires. Aditi came with material desire. She wanted her sons to be happy by achieving the heavenly kingdoms. She had the good fortune to approaching her husband, a pure devotee, and he told her what to do and she did it. It's not that she didn't have the material desire while she did it. She never gave up the material desire from beginning, middle, and end. But she pleased the Lord by following the instructions to the best of her ability. In the fourth canto in one purport, Srila Prabhupada says, The Lord is so kind to the devotee. He doesn't look at the ulterior motive for which the devotee comes to serve him. He simply looks at the service. He accepts the service. And if you do the service to the best of your ability, you give it your all. Desire may be there in the heart, in the back of the mind, but put it on the back shelf. Don't act upon it. Don't actively cultivate that I'm going to achieve this because I think it will make me happy. Have some faith in this process and in the Vaishnavas. Just forget about it for a while. And put your full effort enthusiastically, sincerely, seriously in the process of devotional service. Anyone at any level of bhakti, kanishta, madhyam, uttama, can perform pure devotional service. Anakulyena, another important aspect of devotional service, it means favorably what's pleasing to Krishna but you can't exactly say what's pleasing to Krishna that's an incomplete understanding of bhakti it can have a, a definition too broad or too narrow Chanura when he was beating on the chest of Krishna in the arena wrestling arena Krishna was taking great pleasure he loved the fight was Chanura performing pure devotional service pleasing Krishna not even not even close. Mother Yasoda, when she put Krishna down, Damodar down, oh, the milk's going to bowl over, the best milk from the best grasses of Govardhan, the best quality milk, it's going to boil over. I want to save that milk for my baby Krishna. Krishna is suckling her breast. She puts him down to do so, he becomes very upset bites his lip in anger and goes and breaks the pots of yogurt, etc. He wasn't happy. 
He wasn't pleased. But was Mother Yasoda doing pure devotional service when she saved the boiling milk? Yes. It's the intent of pleasing Krishna that is important. This is the complete and the concise understanding of Anakulyena, favorable service to Krishna. And of course, the third aspect is that pure devotional service is offered to Krishna. Krishna means his expansions, it means his devotees, Krishna and his energies. Of course, we're fortunate because we're trying to serve Krishna, Shaima Sundar. Sweeter than sweet. The sweetness overpowers, covers the Aishvarya. She gets Vishnu Bhakti. It's pure Bhakti, but in comparison to Krishna Bhakti, there is no comparison. The pleasure that the Lord gets from the devotees of Vrajabhumi, of Goloka Vrindavan, there is no comparison. We know this from the teachings of Chaitanya Charitamrita, etc. Everyone's giving me reverential prayers. Everyone throughout the universe. I love even more when my mother is trying to chastise me, when my friends defeat me in wrestling, when my beloved sulkily turns her back away from me and forces me to submit to her, to try and win back her kind attention. This intimacy, the sweetness of Krishna Bhakti, this is what we are being offered via the medium of Vaidhi Bhakti in ISKCON. We're devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. In this process of Vaidhi Bhakti, we have the goal of achieving spontaneous Raga Bhakti, Prema Bhakti of the Vrajvasis. And this is possible even for you and I even at whatever level we're at. Now the secondary features are all about getting rid of the desires. Anyabhi lashita sunyam. Now generally we take that to mean no desires and that's how most of us think. I can't do pure devotional service. I have desires. They pop up. Guess what? They pop up even in the mind of those in Bhava Bhakti. These things happen. Yamunacharya, the epitome of sense gratification, sex desire. He says, ever since I've been relishing and, 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 and tasting the, the ever-increasing pleasure of service, divine service to my Lord, whenever I think of sex life, my lips curl and I spit at the thought. It means, one, that a desire entered the mind. Boop! Bubble from the swamp. But is that an obstruction to the pure devotional service? Depends how you... Reciprocate with that desire. Anyabilasha means no desires, but that's not what Rupa Goswami gives us. He says, Anyabilashi ta shunyam. Ta means you can accommodate desires, they can be there. And the subject I'm speaking about, material desire may be there. But if it is in the background and you don't act upon it, it just is what it is. We are who we are. We're covered to the extent we are. Krishna knows that. But when he sees that, my Lord, I'm a fool, I'm hearing that material enjoyment will not help me. That material attachment is what keeps me in offensive chanting of the holy names of the Lord. When we hold on to it, having some hope that there's some pleasure in sense gratification. But when he sees that, no, I don't want. It's almost as if this false ego is a tattoo on my heart. How do you get rid of the tattoo? It seems impossible, but it is possible. They have laser surgery. Lord Nishingadev, expert surgeon. He can pull out the material desires from the, by the roots. Pure bhakti does that. Pure bhakti is when Krishna is pleased. He's pleased when we try our best to follow the instructions of the spiritual master, of the Vaishnavas, of the disciplic succession. He's pleased when they are pleased. It's how it works. It's so easy. 
Theoretically, Krishna says, I'm going to tell you the most confidential knowledge. Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru. He says it twice in Bhagavad Gita. In this verse, it says she, with full attention, concentrated her mind upon Krishna. That's all. Savaimana, Krishna Padari Vindyo. Is that so easy? Most of us will say, well, wow, I can't do it all the time. She did full attention throughout the entire vrat. No nonsense, no prajapa, no wasting time. She heard Bhagavatam, she served the Brahmins, she performed the yagya, feeding the fire, pleasing Vishnu, distributed prasadam, chanted the names of the Lord and meditated upon the Lord, the form of the Lord within her heart. Pure bhakti. She was elevated enough, Satyuga, mother of the demigods. She could hear the instructions and then act on it. We're told, always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Are we able to do that? The always remember Krishna doesn't come until we have love for Krishna. When you love your guru, you will always think of him. When you love Srila Prabhupada, you will always remember him. You will see him in the persons of everyone you meet throughout this world and in every circumstance knowing that he's there protecting us from within and without directly and indirectly everyone is our guru representative of Srila Prabhupada and his followers that is something that is accessible to you and I at this level in bhakti for the exalted Vaishnavas, they see Krishna within the heart of everyone, within every moving, non-moving thing, everywhere in this world. Their love enables them to do so. So they never forget. But it's applicable, this Atman Nivedana is applicable. This concentrating our mind is possible when we develop love for Srila Prabhupada and his followers. How do you do that? By service. By pleasing them. When they pray to the Lord and to the disciplic succession on our behalf, then the gift can be given. It's a descending process. And we have to have the right consciousness in performing it. Sincerity is the essence of Krishna consciousness and seriousness. There are two aspects to pure devotional service. The mood and the activities. And Srila Prabhupada emphasizes the cultivation of Krishna consciousness, which means following the do's and do, giving up the do-nots, engaging your body, your mind, and your intelligence in the service, active service of the Lord. There was this wonderful example yesterday. One Prabhu at Nash, Nishingapali was asking Janani Vas for his mercy, for the mercy of Nishingade. He told him how Bhakti Vinod Thakur got the mercy of Nishingadev. He rolled in the dust, praying, when will the Lord reveal himself to me? When will he place his lotus feet upon my head? When will he bless me with the benediction? Serve Radha and Krishna here in Mayapur Dham. Chant the pure holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Have no fear. By the blessings of my devotees, all obstacles will be removed. He told him that's how Bhakti Vinod Thakur got the mercy. And he said, you should do the same. Roll in the dust here and call out the names in the Shingade. The Prabhu didn't understand that was the opportunity. It was an instruction. Right the next moment, a garland comes from Nishingadev and is put in the hands of Jananivas, a Tulsi Manjari, a Tulsi leaf garland to offer to the Lord. The Lord showed instantly, oh, you offered this opportunity for someone to get my mercy. He was wanting it cheap, just please give me your blessings. The blessings are in the service, actively engaging the senses the mind, the intelligence in Krishna's service. That's the mercy. That's how it descends. That's what Krishna wants to see. Our best endeavors. My best is paltry, meager compared to many of you Prabhus. Doesn't matter if we do our best. We may cheat ourselves, we may fool others, but you don't 
fool the Mahabhagavad Guru or Vaishnavas. You certainly don't fool Krishna. But if they see, there's this wonderful quote by Srila Prabhupada where he says, a pure devotee is one who loves Lord Krishna without any other motive. Such an exalted devotee is very rare. However, by Krishna's grace, all the sincere devotees who've kindly come to help me are exhibiting the symptoms of pure devotees. Even if there is some ulterior motive, this will soon be given up because of their practicing the pure process of Krishna consciousness. It's like this fan. Before I ask someone to turn it on, the switch had not been turned on. Prabhupada used the example of the lights. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. We have the independence to decide, do we want to be Krishna, try and please Krishna, his Vaishnavas, his servants, or not? No one can do that for us. No one can make the decision within our heart. But Krishna knows when we repeatedly surrender our life to him. It's not something that just happens like that. Oh, the lightning bolt hits and now I'm a lover of Krishna. It's a gradual process for almost all of us. Every day, this manmana bhava madbhakto madjaji mam namaskaru. Sri Prabhupada said, throughout the day we should be offering our obeisances to the Lord. Before every activity of service we should be Reminding ourselves, we're the eternal servant of Krishna and I'm going to do this for your pleasure. The pure devotees do like that. They hanker, they, they want so badly to be protected from Maya. Don't let me fall into Maya. They pray as such. And they pray, let me simply serve your devotees. Let me have your service. And let me help others understand this devotional service. Practice and share. That's the fast track to Krishna consciousness. To the best of our ability, sincerely and seriously practice Krishna consciousness as it's given by the spiritual master, by the Vaishnavas in the Shastra. And then share it with others. Some may say, well, what realization do I have of this class, the subject matter of class? I'll give you one nice quote where Srila Prabhupada encourages us. If we chant our rounds and remain strong in the principles of Krishna consciousness, then we will be able to lift up even the lowest among men through the potency of our sincere chanting. We're not the doers. We're the instruments. We're begging for the service to become qualified as servants, even though disqualified to be allowed to do service. In such a mood, then one can chant the holy names. Then one can share the glories of devotional service to the Lord. Because it's simply coming to, through us. We got out of the way. We conscientiously, that was the last verse. Let's see if I can find it. The last sentence of that purport Jananivas Prabhu had. I loved it. One should follow this process conscientiously. Apply your mind, your intelligence, your emotions, your desire in this process of Krishna consciousness. Not only is it a positive process, it's a very personal process. We should be doing what we're doing to please the one we love. Guru Vaishnavas and Krishna. And if I don't love them, if I don't feel I'm sincere, Srila Prabhupada says, then pray for the sincerity. Pray for the affection. Pray for the love. All the Vaishnavas who have achieved Krishna, they prayed harder for that desire than any other desire. We sometimes lament that life is so rough. We're being beaten, beaten, beaten ground down by the wheel of time and the whips of this material energy. There's a reason for that. So that we will fall down on our knees. At some point we're forced. We fall down on our knees. And if we have the good fortune to beg at that point, take on the mood that Srila Prabhupada said we should take, cry when chanting, help, 
help me. I can't do it. On my own, I'm lost, I'm helpless, I'm sinful, I'm offensive, I have no qualifications. Krishna is saying, just do it, surrender. Help me here. And that's what Mahaprabhu came to do. Indiscriminately give everyone the example and the mercy. He cried out for Krishna. He raised his hands chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Where is Krishna? Where? How can I serve Krishna? And he, anyone he glanced upon, he would give this precious gift indiscriminately. He came to practice and to give. And we simply have to open our arms, our hearts, to accept it and try it the best we can. I hope this has given some illumination on how despite being unqualified, if we surrender and hold on to the instructions of the spiritual master and the previous acharyas, we get the benefit of pure devotional service. We can perform pure devotional service. And the more we do it, the more they give their mercy, the more empowerment they give. And at some point it becomes uninterrupted because we've realized that the foolish material desires that brought us to Krishna consciousness was just broken glass. And Krishna consciousness, love for Krishna, pure devotional service are the gems that Lord Chaitanya and his followers are giving us. I think I'm going to try and save a little time. This is one of the shortest amount of times I've yapped on. But if there's any questions or discussion on this, it'd be nice if the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis contribute. Yes, Mataji, can you come get this? And then pass it around when it's time. Probably have to turn it on. Srila Prabhupada, Kate! Thank you, sir. Prabhuji, this question is pertaining to yes, uh, the chapter before uh, while describing about Payovrata. Kashiva Muni says that one has to be a pure and simple devotee. What does it mean to be a simple devotee? Simple devotee. That's a good question. Janani Vas Prabhu, do you want to answer that? Huh? <laughs> Simple devotee. Give him the mic. <laughs> Give him the mic, please. Here is a simple devotee. To a fault, he practices humility. This is my opinion. He was given the opportunity to share his realizations. What realizations do I have that I associate with those who are simple? Introspectively look within oneself and see where we fall short. Try harder praying, help me Lord. It's a gradual process, but association is so important. And the desire is so important. If you want to be a simple devotee, pray for simple. Simple means you accept it as it is. We don't have to get real intellectual about Krishna consciousness. We can be satisfied with the essence of Krishna consciousness, which is as simple as chant Hare Krishna, dance and take Pashadam. And fill in the rest of the day with the glories of the Lord, the services of the Lord and His devotees. Don't be hypocritical. I put it out in the very beginning that some of this discussion was simply my aspirations, not my realizations. But this is the message being given to us. And with your blessings, I hope to someday remain fixed in that aspiration. To be a humble devotee of the Lord and His devotees. This is the mood. And when we follow, you have experience, practical experience, what it means. If you didn't have the mercy, if you hadn't tasted some of the bliss of Krishna consciousness, you wouldn't be sitting here asking that question. So keep on and encourage each other. Share what we have. 
And in this way, the blessings come so that we can realize, I don't want to be an arrogant devotee. I don't want to be complicated. I want to be simple. I simply want to please Krishna. Is that okay? Are you sure? Anybody else? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I want to say something. Yoga Maya covers Krishna. Yoga Maya covers the Dham. Yoga Maya likewise covers this movement of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. As Janayavas Prabhu said the last time he said in this chair that this movement is under the direct supervision of Rupa Goswami, quoting Srila Prabhupada. Many of my God brothers and sisters, at least I can say some of my God brothers and sisters, have somehow or other allowed their pain or suffering to cloud them to the point of focusing on the many faults that this International Society of Krishna Consciousness has in those trying to execute the orders of Srila Prabhupada. An institution, spiritual institution in the material world, very, very difficult. And you can even hear quotes, Bhakti Siddhanta Swami, our Thakur, saying that it's an evil, but a necessary evil. This is the vehicle whereby the floodgates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are, the mercy is coming down, spreading like wildfire throughout the world. Other branches also, no question. We're not so arrogant to think we're the only devotees of the Lord. I heard Srila Prabhupada personally say that to some God brothers of his. My devotees sometimes think they're the only devotees. But Srila Prabhupada set the example for us. With all thy faults, Iskhan, I love thee. Iskhan, if you want, according to the eyes of the beholder, you can see the pure devotees that surround you. You can take advantage of the purity of devotional service in so many ways being offered, being facilitated in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. But there are so many ways in which Kali Yuga, Kali and Maya try to discourage and split us apart to focus on the the bad. There are Kali Chela in our movement, no doubt. What's surprising about that? I just came out of Cully's grass. I'm trying to wiggle free. What's surprising that there are pretenders and hypocrites that also are in this movement. But there are plenty of pure Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. If we maintain simplicity, sincerity, a purpose, then the Lord reveals who those devotees are. That's the secret. Association is 90% of the game. And our own chanting, so very important. There's nothing else to be had but the chanting. That's the most important service. And there is pure chanting going on throughout the world under the guidance of Srila Prabhupada. Since I still have time, that clock is five minutes fast, I'm going to read one quote from the Adi Purana wherein it is said, there's no vow like chanting the holy name, no knowledge superior to it, no meditation which comes anywhere near it and gives the highest result, no penance is equal to it, nothing is as potent or as powerful as the holy names. Chanting is the greatest act of piety and the supreme refuge. Even the words of the Vedas do not possess sufficient power to describe its magnitude. 
Chanting is the highest path to liberation, peace, and eternal life. It's the pinnacle of devotion, the heart's joyous proclivity, and attraction, and the best form of remembrance of the Supreme Lord. The Holy Name has appeared solely for the benefit of the living entities as their Lord and Master, their supreme worshipable object, and their spiritual guide and mentor. And as Mother Yamuna Devi said, Yes, I can't deny it, I am a lover of kirtan. Kirtan is the easiest way to control the mind, and ultimately the only way into the higher realm of Radha and Krishna the ultimate kirtan in the spiritual world. Such perfection is the sinecure of my life, the perfection, of, it's the essence of my life, and I know it can be attained through attentive, pure Krishna kirtan. This is why, how, and this is how we should try to encourage each other. Chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Dance and take Pashadam. Srila Prabhupada, Ke! Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam, Ke! Sri Harinam Sankirtan Yagya, Ke! Samaveda Gora Bhakta Vrinda, Ke! Gaur Premanande! Hare Krishna.